Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers. This is Orrin Johnson filling in for Sam's dad. With us today is Jake Wiskirchen, who's the founder and CEO of Zephyr Wellness. He's a marriage and family therapist and nationally certified counselor. Next on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Find your pot of gold at Carson Valley Inn during the Leprechaun Loop Progressive Giveaways. Jackpot progresses $2,500 each drawing night up to $20,000 and $10,000 in grand prize giveaways guaranteed Saturday, March 30th. Get your share of Leprechaun Loot at the Carson Valley Inn. Big R and Sparks is located on Bering Boulevard next to Smith's and across from Reed High School. It's a 50,000 square foot chick magnet. March is chick season at Big R. All locations, cute, adorable, and save 10% on all chick feed and supplies. Bring the kids. Chick season at Big R. Hardware, chicks, and a whole lot more. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the heat back on today. Call us today and we'll fix it today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why freeze for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your furnace fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. Story County is leading Nevada. Home of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, Google, Tesla, Panasonic, and other world leading companies. Story County provides thousands of tech, advanced manufacturing, and logistics careers for Nevadans. We're diversifying and driving Nevada's economy and generating millions in tax revenue and billions in economic activity across Northern Nevada. Story County is leading Nevada's future. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And welcome back to Nevada Newsmakers. This is Orrin Johnson filling in for Sam Shad. With us today is Jake Wiskirchen, who's the founder and CEO of Zephyr Wellness. He's a marriage and family therapist and a nationally certified counselor. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure to be here. So, tons to talk about. Uh, let's talk about the kids. So, when we were young, uh, we were, you know, bullies were everywhere. We were basically feral. Uh, nobody who's in therapy that I know of is, is, is kids. Uh, and now all we talk about is social, uh, emotional learning. Uh, are the kids better off for it or are the kids all right? What's going on? You know, I don't want to describe causality in too broad of a brush, but uh, no, the kids are not okay. And I don't know that it's necessarily because of one thing or another, but we do have some pretty strong emerging evidence conducted, uh, some research conducted by Jonathan Haidt out of uh, uh, you know, back east. He's got a great substack called After Babel if you want to look at this, these data. It outlines a really strong correlation between social media exposure and teen mental illness uh, to the degree that girls are double what the boys are in their correlation to exposure and mental illness and the boys have a link that is as strong or stronger than the link that we we know between lead exposure in childhood and brain damage in adulthood. So, like, nobody's around lead, right? We don't have any leaded gasoline, there's no lead in paint, but here you go ahead and have a device. <laughs> Good right. luck with your mental illness. So is it the device itself? Is it social media? What, what specifically is the impact? What are, what are we seeing? So it, there is a difference between the boys and the girls, and it's not biological. It's what they're attracted to. So boys on their social media adventures, they tend to be more involved in gaming, conversation type stuff and the girls are more image driven so it's the tumblers the tiktoks the instagrams and the boys are more roblox and minecraft and that kind of thing and what we're seeing is that there there's not only a an addictive property that that occurs but there's uh, bullying there's harassment there's pressure to perform all of which we never really experienced when you and i were <laughs> feral and running around the neighborhood <laughs> unsupervised 
and what this creates is a is a and I'll touch on this more a little bit later, but an emotional blocking of sorts where you can't really resolve the conflicts that are going on interpersonally because they're not in front of you. They're out somewhere in the ether. And so you see these comments and these nasty posts and whatnot, and it and it creates a, a loop that never really gets gets locked up. So I don't get to confront the person who's confronting me. I, I just get to carry with me the the burden of the shame and the guilt and the disappointment and, and all that stuff that comes along with social media. So so then what happens a couple of years later? They, they're, is it harder for them to form relationships? Is it harder for the, what what happens in the long term? We we see a lot of self isolation, uh, a lot of uh, withdrawal. And so you know, traditionally, I don't know, 15 years ago or so, when I first b- broke into this profession, we would say, check for signs of depression and anxiety, and they would look like things approximating grades falling and isolation and spending too much time in your room. Well, now everybody's doing it, so it's really hard for the parents to pin down what's deviant from normal behavior if all the normal behavior is isolation and screen time and 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 if you're not keeping a real close tabs on what your kids are doing online you're not going to know what they're exposed to so imagine you and I when we were young you know 9 10 11 years old just having unfettered access to today's internet you're going to be exposing kids to stuff that they're simply developmentally not prepared to handle intake process digest and then spit out so what we're seeing is is manifold manifestation of the struggle where they're exposed to things that are not age appropriate. They don't know how to process it. They don't know how to make sense of it. They post themselves. Their friends ridicule them. No one gets to see this except them. They intake it. They don't have a path outward because the relationship between parent and child has been fractured because it never is established in the first place. And then they show up in places like my office saying, I don't know what's wrong with my kid. He's you know doing X, Y, or Z, or, or my daughter is blah, blah, blah. Uh, help us. And I go, well, how much social media time do they expect? Well, not that much. Well, okay, it's kind of a lot. Yeah, it's kind of all the time, right? And so we, we just go, all right, you got to get them off social media. You got to engage them with friends. You got to put them in, into the wild, so to speak. So, so how do you deal with that? One of the struggles we have, I have a 14-year-old daughter, and she, I, I think she's relatively well adjusted. We waited as long as we possibly could to get her a phone. I would have liked to wait longer, but that's how kids are communicating. Uh, the, the sort of conundrum is that almost more isolating not to give a kid a phone when everybody else has a phone and then they're sort of outside the group chats and all that sort of thing. What sort of is the solution uh, to all this, maybe individually or kind of a broader cultural solution? That's not the first time I've been asked that. My answer is pretty succinct. It's find some other parents who are doing the same thing and aggregate in your, or congregate I should say, in your in your own groups and say this is how we do it in our group. Height's recommendation with his research is post-adolescence, no social media, no social media till post-adolescence. So what does that look like, 16, 17, 18 years old? Um, cell phones in and of themselves are not a bad thing if you can hammer lock them down, but nobody knows how to do that and there's always cracking <laughs> to be done anyway. So, you know, I would say until they're driving, no cell phones. And that's because pay phones aren't ubiquitous anymore. So if you get into a, some sort of incident where you need to communicate, it's good to have a phone. Uh, but we got we got to teach our kids you no know, social media. And yes, I could I can appreciate how it seems more isolative to not be part of the group. But the detriment that comes along with being part of the group is that you you don't get to process what's going on around you because they're everybody's remote and distant and you can mute and block. Is there any kind of government solution? There are some states that have tried you know banning social media for for kids. I don't even know how you do that as a practical matter. Uh, is there any is there any government policy solution that could assist with it? No, frankly, that's all feel good as far as I'm concerned. It's parents outsourcing the parenting to .gov. And I'm not a big fan of that. I mean, even at my agency on the intake form, the consent paperwork says, you know, we don't do fix my kid. And it doesn't read like that. But what it reads like is, you as the executives of your home are in charge of what goes on in that home. And I, with my one hour per week, aren't gonna make as much of an influence as you will the other 167 hours per week, whatever the remaining balances the kids are within your grasp. So I don't think that's appropriate. I don't think it's enforceable. I think it's just something that we kick down the road and pretend like we've dealt with it. Fair enough. All right. Uh, A lot more to talk about when we come back. We're at Tamarack Casino at Nevada Steak with Chef Mike Mahoney. You have fabulous food here. This halibut is extraordinary. The halibut was awesome. It was fun to cook. You get a nice sear on top. 
and then we base that with a little bit of butter and garlic and herbs and stuff. It's, it's fabulous. It's a lot of butter. It is. And it looks really good and it tastes even better. I'm trying this, which is the crab cake. You've got this crispy coating on the outside. What is that? Actually, that's cornflakes. Huh? Cornflakes. Really? Yes, sir. It, the crispiness of the cornflake just adds more crispiness to the already, you know, crispy crab cake. It's, it's awesome. It's my favorite. And I'm a crab cake fanatic. Okay, this I just tried for the first time. It's ahi tuna mm -hmm. in a whole different way. Ahi tuna, it's a tuna tartare. It's ground up. Uh, we mix it with a little bit of spicy mayo, a little avocado puree, and our house-made ponzu sauce in there as well. It tastes to me like sushi without the rice. It's, it's got all the flavorings, but it's absolutely delicious. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. All right, ribeye steak. Ribeye steak, classic. Harris Ranch, certified Angus beef. You can't go wrong with a good steak here. Uh, no, and that ribeye is particularly good. Um, again, we tried that earlier. Mm -hmm. It is fabulous. The wedge salad. Um, I love a wedge salad that comes with a giant hunk of bacon on it. So you've got healthy and you've got bacon. A little How bit of indulgence. Wrong? Yeah, a little indulge. Uh, what's great about this one is the bacon is cooked fresh to order for every single salad. So it's nice and hot. Folks, you've got to come to Tamarack, the casino in South Reno. It is a fabulous place to begin with. It's made even more fabulous by Nevada Steak and your great food. Thank you for inviting us. And we will be coming back over and over because I'm in love with this tuna. I'm in love with the crab cake. Well, the ribeye's pretty, well, the halibut. It's all good, folks. Just about everything. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Welcome back to Nevada Newsmakers. If you're just joining us, this is Orrin Johnson filling in for Sam Shad. And with me today is Jake Wiskirchen, who's the founder and CEO of Zephyr Wellness, a marriage and family therapist and nationally certified counselor. So uh, I want to shift gears a little bit. You co-host co a podcast called Walk the Talk America. Uh, what is it about and where can we find it? Uh, slight correction. The podcast is called Guns and Mental Health. Oh, got it. I'm uh, sorry. And the organization is Walk the Talk America, but oh. that's okay. Uh, common mistake. So the Guns and Mental Health podcast can be found uh, anywhere podcasts are found. And Walk the Talk America, or WTTA, can be found at WTTA.org. It's a nonprofit. Uh, it's a 501c3. We're bridging the gap between firearms ownership and mental health care to join the two cultures, which heretofore have seemed to be mutually exclusive and I'm here to say that they're not because as a firearm zoning concealed carrying mental health practitioner I can tell you that I stand right in the middle of that gap. And the purpose of this organization is really we're suicide prevention at our core but we want to get upstream from that and keep people healthy so that they don't slide into a place of despondency where suicide is on the table. So how we do that is we go through a various types of outreach resources. Uh, one main one is we train up practitioners of all medical care broadly, but specifically mental health, to become more culturally competent with the firearms culture. So what does gun ownership look like? What kinds of flavors does it present as? And the reason we want to do that is so that when a firearms owning patient comes into our clinics, we don't chase them away with fumbling, clumsy, awkward, judgmental language, uh, you know, asking them if they have guns in their home out of a sense of anxiety and urgency, right? Uh, so. Hopefully we, we can invite them in and the, the flip side of that coin is to demystify what counseling is for the firearms owning population, which so, so is usually suspicious of us. So explain that a little bit more, because I, <clears throat> I think that that's right, uh, but why, what is it about the, the gun owners, what, what makes them suspicious of mental health, of counseling, of that sort of thing? For a really long time, we've had a lot of rhetoric from the, the gun community, and that, that spans manufacturers, trainers, distributors, retailers, range operators, and of course the NRA itself with some of its rhetoric that was very not helpful over the years, saying things like doctors need to stay in their lane, right? And, and there's been this, this rift that says don't go get treatment, they're going to think you're crazy, it's going to land you on a list, you're going to lose your 2A rights. And um, so this, this snowballed over a couple of decades, and now we're in a situation where actual policies, not simple rhetoric, are obstructing care access. And some of those policies look like what we would call red flag laws or extreme risk protection orders. And those laws, essentially like any other protection order, uh, extended or temporary that you would file with a court to keep someone away, f away from you, these protection orders can be effectuated under the auspices of threat to harm of self or others with a firearm and they would separate you from your guns. And they can usually in most states be filed by either law enforcement or a family member. 
but more and more states, Colorado, uh, New York, uh, Oregon and Washington are dabbling with it. They're expanding who can file a petition for, a, for this extreme risk protection order to include people like me in the mental health, the medical realm, the education realm. So what that says on a, on a meta level to the firearms owner, which includes our first responders like cops and our military and our veterans, it says, don't go seek care. The therapist might tattle on you. And I don't have a bat phone to the government. It, right. it's, <laughs> that's not a thing. Um, and it's not even appropriate for me to do such a thing. I would, that wouldn't be my first line of intrusion into your life. I would, I would want you to get to a higher level of care if it was that problematic, right? But this is, this is what they're afraid of. They're afraid of getting care because they don't want to lose their rights. Well, and, and where do you kind of draw the line on that? Now, I'm a Second Amendment guy, as you know. Uh, I, I'm very distrustful of the government uh, when it comes to gun control and all that sort of thing. Um, but I'm sympathetic to the idea that uh, somebody may be seeing, again, these red flags for, you know, not to kind of buy into the rhetoric necessarily and say, hey, let's take the guns away for a little bit, kind of put everybody in the corner, yeah. keep everybody safe. Uh, where's the balance there? Because uh, I understand the, uh, the idea that you're just never going to get care, uh, but that's the whole point of these sort of red flag laws is that somebody else can say, hey, I know you're not getting the care. I think you might be a danger to yourself or others. Um, I, I mean, why shouldn't we have somebody who's in a position to sort of know, um, be able to, uh, I don't want to say tattle, but uh, sort of I, take I the love, I love that question because it begets a great answer, I think which is we don't involve external influences. We, we lean on ourselves as a community. And this, is, this is one of the weird, unorthodox positions that I tend to take as a therapist where you know I own my own business, I'm, I'm proud to do what I do, but I'm trying to work myself out of a job. And if I had 12 years left on my lease in Sparks uh, and I don't have to do therapy anymore because everybody's happy and healthy, I'll turn into a brew pub and a coffee shop. As a criminal defense attorney, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so um, where, we, where we go with this is we, we default to education over restriction. And we want to educate people to the point that they're so well attuned to each other and to themselves that they say, if I'm in a time of crisis, I can rely on Oren to take my guns from me. I don't have to call the deputies. I can rely on my wife to change the code on my safe so that I'm locked out until I get through whatever period I need to get through. I don't need to involve the bureaucratic infrastructure that is going to intrude into my life and take my property with no reasonable path back to it, right? Well, and then the question then is if you don't have family or buddies or that sort of thing, which obviously, I mean, we've all worked with veterans, especially, mm -hmm. you're super isolated, everything else, uh, is there not a government stopgap? I, I don't know that there needs to be one. There obviously or is it, or is it one, does right? more harm than good? I, I think it does more harm than good. And we have some evidence from a, a paper that was written in 2021 in Psychiatric Quarterly that surveyed New York State gun owners uh, who were already in care, by the way. So we already have a sampling bias issue. But these, these people were already in care, they're firearms owners, and 9% of those said that if they knew that their rights were on the table, they would be resistant to seek care or hesitant to seek care. So what we do is we say, check in on yourselves, lean on a neighbor, and um, if you don't have somebody, there's gun shops now across many, many states that will be willing to take your firearms in in that time of crisis, even if you're, you're moving out of the country for a little while or whatever. So we want this voluntary. We, we don't want it compelled from the top down. We want people to be able to organically say, I'm, I'm struggling, I need to separate myself from this thing that's most likely to take my life, uh, or the life of somebody else. You got an angsty teenager, you know, whatever. So. Well, uh, we have to leave it there just for this segment, but when we come back, uh, we're going to be talking a lot more about government and mental health. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Story County is leading Nevada, home of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, Google, Tesla, Panasonic, and other world-leading companies. Story County provides thousands of tech, advanced manufacturing, and logistics careers for Nevadans. We're diversifying and driving Nevada's economy and generating millions in tax revenue and billions in economic activity across Northern Nevada. Story County is leading Nevada's future. 
Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers Comp that works for you. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you. Safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators. From the exotic to the everyday. Trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Welcome back to Nevada Newsmakers. This is Oren Johnson filling in for Sam Shad. If you're just joining us with me today is Jake Wiskirchen, the CEO and founder of Zephyr Wellness. So in a couple of the earlier segments, uh, every time we brought up government policy, uh, you'd poo-poo it and shut it down pretty hard. So, uh, so let me ask you, uh, obviously the government is involved in, in mental health and, and uh, both in funding and all that sort of thing. What, what are some of the things that you're seeing, particularly with, with funding for mental health? Uh, I feel like the discussion is always, we don't have enough beds, we don't have enough providers, um, and that, that gap seems to be growing and not shrinking. So is the government helping or hurting? Explain. Uh, <laughs> government is required for some functions. Government will do nothing well. So that's where I stand. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not that clean. Um, I think that, that government could do better if it were to, say, pull a lot of stuff in, I know it sounds weird to say centralized, but instead of outsourcing to managed care organizations, for example, for Medicaid, we'll say, uh, I think if it pulled it in and uh, did some more centralization within the state of Nevada and didn't outsource it, I think we'd get a lot cleaner, more effective treatment. Like, like government employees as therapists? Yeah, or? yeah I mean, hire, hire you know, some of the unemployed Nevadans to do some of this stuff instead of outsourcing it to Anthem or whatever. I think that would be useful. I think there are, I, I, I do have ideas for how to solve problems. I don't just come in and complain without <laughs> solutions because sure. it bothers me when other people do that. So that's to say that, okay, right? So there's an infrastructure issue that would take a heavy lift and a lot of political will from a lot of different people and a lot of different domains, and it's probably never going to happen. So I can, I can pipe dream in one hand and I can just make small massaging changes in another. Instead, we create bureaucracies. Yes, uh, and, and they become Byzantine and uh, overwrought with different tunnels and, and paths that nobody can navigate. Uh, when you outsource that, I think it becomes even harder because now you've involved a third party administrator who has more investment in making money than spending it and spending it requires access and care. Okay, so people are getting worse. We covered that in the first segment. Uh, so that gap is growing and in Nevada we do have a provider deficiency that tends to lead the nation more years than it doesn't. Uh, so there are some efforts in place. The last legislative session I know put forth some bills that created um, certain avenues for creating more providers. Loan, student loan forgiveness, uh, there's, there's all sorts. Telehealth, some of these yeah. other things. Mm -hmm. So we would like to access more providers from different states. That would be nice. We could get rid of some of those state restrictions that make no sense to anyone anywhere. That would be cool. Uh, but really at the core of it, we have a, we have a real problem with Medicaid at its, at its core with regard to how much they reimburse for psychotherapy, which is what I do, talk therapy, one-on-one -on -one direct care. The, the, the rate has not gone up for 11 years in Nevada which is totally unconscionable. When I first opened Zephyr nine years ago, Medicaid rate was right in the middle of the payer reimbursement. It was, it was pretty solid. And now it is dead last, and it's not last by a small margin, it's last by a lot. 
And we have to get that up because what that does is when you're not incentivizing people to care for this wide population that encompasses almost 700,000 people in Nevada of our 3.2 million or whatever we've got these days, that's a lot of people who go without care access because I, as a practitioner, have no motivation financially to go through the Byzantine labyrinthian process just to get my paltry crumbs under the table. Right, because it's not just, you don't just send the government a bill and, and they pay it. it the the process for it is, <laughs> is, 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 and if you screw up the process, because I've, yeah. I've experienced this, not personally, but with, uh, with some uh, clients, where uh, they didn't fill out the paperwork correctly, they actually got bad advice from the government officials, and then were threatened with criminal prosecution yep. for it, or, it looks or like civil lawsuits, fraud. multi-million dollar civil lawsuits for fraud, where yep. no fraud occurred. Yeah, and, and it's not quite that heavy-handed. I, I have the pleasure of working with the, you know, the Division of Healthcare Finance and Policy quite frequently, and they're, they're good people. They don't have horns coming out of their heads or anything like that. They're, they're, they're usually pretty forgiving. But you know, to that point, the, it's really hard to make a commitment to that level. So what I say, like I said earlier, I'm trying to work myself out of a job. We, we give resources away in the form of podcasts and YouTube videos and free and anonymous mental health screenings to keep people well so that they don't have to come into the clinic at all. And if they do, you know, we'd like to offer them really good care. But we've got to incentivize people to get into the field. Got it. Now I would say there's so much more to talk about, yeah. but we're out of time for today. So thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll be right back. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low, and our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way, because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the heat back on today. Call us today and we'll fix it today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why freeze for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your furnace fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. Big R and Sparks is located on Bering Boulevard next to Smith's and across from Reed High School. It's a 50,000 square foot chick magnet. March is chick season at Big R. All locations, cute, adorable, and save 10% on all chick feed and supplies. Bring the kids. Chick season at Big R. Hardware, chicks, and a whole lot more. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suite. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. Calamity. It lurks around every corner. Or not. That's why UMC Quick Care is around every corner with locations around the valley. UMC Quick Care for all your small calamities. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us. This has been Oren Johnson filling in for Sam Shad. You can join us 24-7 at NevadaNewsmakers.com.